Ba-da-da-dum. I'm the lightning cat. <laughs> I'm still having fun with that one. <laughs> I think that's a good intro. I really do. How are you, everybody? Put it down in the comments below. How you doing? I'm watching uh, the solar cell that is transparent like glass. Keynote, Professor Richard Lunt at something something. Uh, published November 26, 2015, and there is a train coming through, so just wait till that thing kindly right off. I'd like to talk about the the uh, the positives as well as the negatives of what they're proposing in this video. Yeah, yeah, leave your tracks and be gone. I would say something along the lines of, of uh, a particular pun involving trees and leafing, but um, the train left its tracks is well good enough. Yeah, that, that could be a running gag. <laughs> right. Okay. Check out this excerpt. It's apparent by shrinking down the size of the components, but that only gets you so far. Ubiquitous figured out that the key to a truly transparent solar cell isn't the size of the parts you use, but the kind of light you're trying to absorb. We've designed photoactive materials that let visible light pass through but can selectively harvest the parts of the solar spectrum that we can't see with our eye, namely the ultraviolet and the near infrared parts of the solar spectrum. <laughs> Gotta stop you right there. Okay, visible light, okay, fine. Everybody wants to see everything, but the infrared and the UV, those are important. Harvest them for production of uh, photovoltaic energy, fine. But, don't take 100%. Here, here's the reason why. UV light, uh, particularly UV variation letter C, stops bacteria, uh, mold spores, other types of fungal spores, and various forms of uh, really nasty germs from being able to reproduce. UVC inhibits the reproductive cycles of germs, the harmful ones. So, okay, you're going to harvest UV light. Don't harvest 100% of it. Let some of it get through so that it kills bacteria as it all always has been doing and continues to do for everyone. Now, the infrared, same deal. Don't take 100% of it. So hopefully, hopefully these panels that they're talking about, hopefully they don't take 100% of near-infrared and UV. And uh, I would like to know what variations of UV that they're actually looking into taking and using for photovoltaic energy. That would help a lot because we need UV light. It's beneficial for uh, a person's health as well as for, you know, generally knocking out the bacteria before they become a problem. So the positive here is they're changing clunky, opaque, well opaque means you can't see through it. They're changing these clunky, traditional, out-of-date solar panels into something a lot better. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, from 2015, but I haven't heard uh, head nor tail of this being implemented yet, so who knows. The downside is they're harvesting 
a, a particular wavelength UV which we need to hit our skin because it uh, has more health benefits than people like to let on uh, so to balance it out try to get it to where it doesn't take a hundred percent of these wavelengths hey uh, any percentage of efficiency in this above or at 20% that's perfectly fine there's a I wrote down a list let's see something that you could go out and buy uh, the top three are all under 50% efficient so far uh, on my list Sun Power Monocrystalline yeah Monocrystalline is better than Multicrystalline so Alta Devices Multi-Junction Generation 4 it, that one's at 25% efficiency then Spectralab Multi-Junction 30.7% efficiency. So this this perfectly optically clear, not perfectly, but this optically clear solar panel they're making at 20% efficiency taking UV and near infrared that that's amazing. I like that. That's something I want to use. I mean take a look at this my controller here if I were to replace this clear plastic with the solar cell they're talking about making it would be absorbing the UV and near-infrared wavelengths from this blue light which it doesn't have any near-infrared but it has a lot of UV because it's blue Blue is very close to UV. I don't want to explain the spectrum. I really don't. It may not have as much as the sun, but it's there. Same as the, the lighting for in your house. I would get some amount of electricity out of this light, and it would be recycled back into my controller for me to use while playing games or my laptop screen, or my television screen, or the glass around light bulbs, or... They're talking about using it for windows. I'm talking about going even further. Put it, over, put it in place of all the stuff that emits light, where you have clear plastic over it, put this on it. Find a way to integrate this uh, stuff they've made into, well, impact resistant or shatter and bullet resistant glass as well as borosilicate glass so that you can put it on your television, your computers, on the surface of your cell phone, everywhere that a light is emitted. That way you're recycling and micromanaging that recycling of all the energy well, not all the energy, but all the energy possible. So, think of it this way. That as glass on your windows. Okay, you, you're generating uh, some extra power with that. Go even further. Put it on the, uh, the lampshades or the coverings for your light bulbs when and you put them in your fixtures tie that into the energy recycling grid in your house integrate it into your afterglow controllers for your Xbox there use it there put it on your TV put it on your laptop you start recycling all this excess energy and then put it in a glass paneling and slap it up on the ceiling how often do you look up at the ceiling and admire it just for being there not very often right slap a solar cell on that sucker 
You got tons of light going off inside the house. Where do you have any energy recycling going off inside the house along with it? Don't just think outside, think everywhere. <laughs> well, this isn't so much a rant as it is just a, an exposition. Me throwing in my addition because when I see presentations like this, and this is a presentation for potential investors and backers for this project, yeah, th this presentation I'm watching, this is how the uh, rich people, quotation fingers, this is how the rich people do their, um, their investing and their presentations for a project. Much more different than the stuff they teach you in school. I like this. I want to see this implemented everywhere, not just in Windows, but I want to see it replace the clear parts of electronics. I want to see it. Uh, I want to see it put on the ceiling in houses, so that when you turn on a light, you're recycling some of that energy. Come to think of it, if I had enough money after taking care of myself and getting myself situated, I would actually line a few walls with it because they're just empty space. I mean, I'm not going to put anything decorative on them. Most of what I have serves a purpose. Yeah, empty walls. <clears throat> Instead of hanging up pictures, hang up uh, something like a giant TV screen made out of this stuff that has a, a screen behind it that'll display your pictures. Like if you got family portraits and stuff, get a digital display for that and have it, uh, have it modified with this material. That way it's recycling the energy from whatever picture it's displaying as well as taking energy in from your lights that are on and your ceiling fans or your uh, chandeliers or whatever. Just energy recycling. Micromanage it like a fiend. If you do that, if everybody does that, it's, it's an all or nothing thing because... The efficiency of these uh, solar cells is low. I'm not going to try and say, uh, oh, it's so efficient. No, 30% is pretty high as far as solar cells goes. But this, this near optically clear one, if we micromanage it, like I'm saying, and implement it everywhere on every clear surface then all those small bits of recycling add up and uh, I'm not going to conclude yet but uh, there is a problem that will occur when energy recycling gets to the point where your house is producing more energy than it consumes. We get to the point where everyone's doing that, and okay, yeah, great idea, cat. You you uh, you helped everybody. You convinced everybody. You threw in money and marketed it and and showed off uh, gala events for it and whatnot. Okay, we got that far. Let's let's say that happens. What happens to the power industry as it stands now that's using fossil fuels? My idea that I've had is retrain them to do maintenance and service for this solar system setup, which it's going to lay off like... 50 to 60 percent 
if if uh, if in this hypothetical situation this uh, energy recycling in conjunction with other things takes over the the traditional fossil fuel industry will become obsolete and that's not something to be scared of or afraid of don't be afraid of it it, it needs to be obsolete we need to move on to uh, energy recycling and efficiency so when we get there we're basically gonna get to the point where fossil fuels are obsolete at that point what do we do okay um, during the whole time we've been retraining people from the fossil fuel industry to work in this new industry um, uh, stock market's been shifting to accommodate uh, people who want to own stock in it yada 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 we get all this stuff shifted over and we finally get to the point where okay fossil fuels obsolete we can no longer use it for anything not even for the stock market so what do we do simply let go of it flow from the old into the new flow like water it's a zen thing well not so much as a zen as it is a a universal truth you you have an end goal in mind and you you let yourself adapt to the changing circumstances in route to that end goal so for everybody in the fossil fuel industry this isn't something to be afraid of for all you in the uh the, what is it the, I've got a freaking brokerage account that I've got zero in. <laughs> Big dummy I am. I can't remember the freaking term. Shareholders. There it is. For all you shareholders in the fossil fuel industry, if you switch from fossil fuel to renewable energies, you're, you're switching. You're not losing anything. You're just converting you're adapting to the situation as it changes this isn't a bad thing in fact it's a very good thing on top of that there's there's another financial point to take into account here this will reduce the the fossil fuel industry to the point where we're not gonna be spending energy to extract fossil fuels at that point Society needs to adapt and change socially, uh, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Everyone needs to adapt and change to flow into this, this new thing. And what's going to have to happen is uh, the rising cost of living is going to have to go down. Once you hit that uh, energy efficiency and recycling point as far as uh, a species development uh, uh, holistically thinking your, your species has to adapt and evolve emotionally mentally psychologically spiritually and, and change into a better people I'm so used to speaking to individuals and making very small uh, analogies how's that gonna happen simply you you think of it as you have an end result in mind and you simply adapt to whatever situation occurs it's it's not a motivational talk that I'm trying to give it's it's the simple truth of how society needs to progress these old outmoded outdated ideals of money wealth and power and control over another those need to be discarded the sooner the better however that's not a historically good thing every time someone's tried to change or come up with a 
philanthropologically activist thing, it's been uh, disastrous. So, we'll start simply with the idea of adapt and change as necessary and instead of holding on to things, this is a big problem everyone has. I have it too. Hoarding, holding on to things, thinking that you need to do this thing, like use money to exist when you don't. If, if you just do what you need to do because it's needed. Yeah, hey, I'm... I'm Burton originally started uh, talking about this solar power, but it's related to the evolution of humanity holistically. It's a technological evolution of sorts, so humanity holistically needs to mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually evolve along with technology. I'm not saying integrate technology into your being, your person. No, I'm saying adapt to the changing situations. Be like water, flow. Which, uh, if you ask any Zen Buddhists, they'll tell you that as well. I was really hoping that I wouldn't have to reference any particular religious or spiritual belief. But hey, there you go. Like Kung Fu, like Zen Buddhism, the, the progress and evolution of the mind, the spirit, the soul, the body, all wrapped up together. Think holistically. That's the only way to uh, successfully integrate this amazing technology. Because it's going to make a lot of money problems amplified. Because money itself is the problem. If people would just do the job. You know. Just go and do your work. Because it's what's best for everyone involved. What about me you may ask. I'm giving this idea and this... Uh, what should I summarize this as? Holistic view. Uh, a summary of a lot of things. Because I could say a lot more. I'm an idea guy. I come up with ideas on possibilities. And think of scenarios. And then try to integrate that into reality. I'm an idea guy. So... If my job is to come up with ideas, so be it. Okay, I'm sitting here on YouTube giving my ideas. That's fantastic. I'm just doing it because that's what I am, an idea guy. I'm also a gamer, and uh, I do that too. So there you go. There's me doing my job because it's what needs to be done. Humanity holistically needs to evolve and grow. Emotionally, psychologically, mentally, spiritually. If the physical evolution can... We can wait for that. We, we've got to get everyone's minds, hearts, souls... All focused in harmony together first. If all the parts of you aren't in harmony, then you're not in harmony. said a lot I'll go ahead and end it there that's a lot to think about even though it doesn't seem relative or relevant it all is it really is Einstein proved that mathematically I'm not gonna go into that right now hopefully some of you enjoy this uh, philosophical uh, existentialism <laughs> I don't know what to call it it's a lot of things, really. Hopefully some of you enjoy it. So leave a like, leave a comment, give your ideas. Help uh, push the effort along to the end goal. 
hit the bell icon for notifications when I make new videos. Subscribe to my channel. Go and support my channel on Patreon. Do that today. That way I don't have to ask you tomorrow. Till next time, everyone. Bye.